When you think of Hawaii, you think beaches, surf, sunshine, right? And for a lot of people, Kona Coffee. Well, that name, that brand has turned into a massive moneymaker. So how is it possible that most of the Kona Coffee you buy isn't pure Kona Coffee? In fact, not even close. A new report is aggravating a brewing debate. From family plots and backyard businesses to sprawling fields across the coast, in Kona, coffee is king. And they taste it like, wow, this is really smooth. And I said, yes, that's, that's what Kona coffee tastes like. Kona farmer Michelle Joven makes Mama's Kona coffee. She says she's one of hundreds of coffee farmers here fighting to finally expose the truth to you about what's happening to Kona coffee. I think there's a lot of money involved and it's clearly not from the side of the small farmer. The Kona Coffee Farmers Association just sparked a fresh debate with a new report that claims Hawaii's farmers are losing big bucks, nearly 15 million a year to big companies, or so-called blenders, that abuse the Kona name by mixing Kona with other coffees, and that coffee drinkers are losing out even more in quality and taste. But if they knew, they would think differently. We've bought this one at the grocery store, and I think we probably bought this one at the grocery store also. It says Kona Classic. Did you yes. assume it was Kona Coffee? Yes. Yeah. It's a wonderful package, and palm trees always catches my attention. I don't know what's in it, really. At a local market, we caught up with Kona Coffee farmer Kolauer Bondera. He says customers are confused. Makes me think immediately this must be Kona Coffee. Kona coffee, yes, but only 10% Kona coffee. It does say so. Did you notice? Right down there. It leaves me feeling, as a farmer, uh, cheated. As a farmer, the first thing I need at the end of the day is to sell my crop. Tom Greenwell sells most of his crop to those big blunders, and he says he's fine with that. He says Kona coffee is notoriously expensive to grow and produce, and he says there's no way consumers would buy enough of it if the only option was a $30 bag. How many bottles of wine do you buy at $100 versus 12 or 15 The Hawaii Coffee Company, think Lion Coffee and Royal Kona, is the big daddy of the blenders. They roast and package more Kona coffee than anyone in the world. And almost every bag they produce with a Kona label. This is Indonesian green coffee. Is a 10% blend. As for the new report that says blenders like him are stealing profits from farmers and ruining the pure Kona name. If consumers didn't like it, didn't want it, and didn't understand it, they wouldn't buy it. We changed the law in 2002 to reflect the black package. Not only does Wayman say the report is inaccurate, but he's all for making sure people know what they're paying for. He says up until a few years ago, the 10% label was a teeny tiny one sixteenth of an inch until he got lawmakers to change the law. Now he says he's going after mainland labelers who are not regulated at all. This is how coffee is sold on the mainland. So literally you could produce this bag of coffee on the mainland, have one throw one cone of coffee bean in it, and then call it cone of coffee. So, so much confusion and debate out there. Why doesn't the state step in? Hear why regulators say they can't and won't do a thing about it.